In this video today, we're going to talk about golfer's elbow. The pain that occurs on the inside of the elbow that affects your swing and your ability to be able to do normal activities. Stay tuned to figure out how to treat it, how to prevent it, and how to make sure it doesn't come back. Cutting Edge Pain Relief, the channel that teaches you how to biohack your pain and get back to doing what you love. So golfer's elbow and platelet-rich plasma. We're gonna talk about how to be able to deal with elbow pain that comes from playing or other activities and what are some of the better treatments, including platelet-rich plasma, as a possible sustainable option that allows for you to continue to do the activities that you wanna do. Golfer's elbow is pain on the inside of the arm. It's specifically noted in a medical terminology as medial epicondylitis. But we're gonna talk a little bit about what that means, what are some of the muscles that are involved with it, but it's the inner portion of the elbow that causes the problem. What are the symptoms of golfer's elbow? So some of the symptoms are gonna be things like tenderness and pain on the inner aspect of the elbow is to be expected, weakness of the hands and wrist of the affected arm, as well as numbness and tingling that travels into one or more fingers. Golfer's elbow is not always caused by golf. And frequently, about 90% of cases are actually other injuries that come from elements different than sports. Traditionally, it's labor-related occupations like the aspect of carpentry, construction, and plumbing that have repetitive activities that give problems at the elbow. Some of the other sports in addition to golf that can cause problems are things like rock climbing, or grappling like jujitsu or wrestling. How can you diagnose golfer's elbow? Well, the thing that you can need to be able to assess is what makes the pain worse. So there are a number of activities that can certainly do that. So shaking hands, squeezing a golf club, squeezing a ball, turning a doorknob, making a fist, flexing the wrist, or picking up something in a palm down fashion. If any of those things cause pain, it can be an underlying clue that you may have golfer's elbow. What are some of the affected muscles and anatomy in golfer's elbow? Well, that inner portion of the elbow has the ulnar nerve, it has the ulnar collateral ligament, it has a pronator teres muscle, but in addition, it also has the flexor muscles of the arm. And some of those muscles are gonna be things like the flexor carpi radialis, the palmaris longus, and the flexor carpi ulnaris that you can see in it from a couple of different vantage points. All those muscles can have issues as well as the tendons that insert upon the bone. How can bad golf swings cause pain and what can we do about it? Two most common characteristics of a swing that can lead to golfer's elbow or the first is scooping and the second is chicken winging. So about 55.9% of amateur players have an early release or scoop. And a scoop is an early release swing fault, which we're gonna talk about in a second. And the other is something that's called chicken winging. And about 30% of amateur players have chicken winging. And it's a lead elbow bend with a lead wrist cup through impact. If you take a look at this slide, what you want to do is what's pictured on the right. You want to have wrists that are still cocked and the club is upright as the hands swing below the hips. Frequently, in many amateur players, they have the wrists are not cocked and the top of the hand is almost parallel to the arm. The reason why this presents a problem is the following, is it actually results in a decrease in terms of the angle created with the club shaft and the lead arm in the downswing. And there's a number of reasons for why this might be the case. Frequently, it's because golfers are trying to be able to generate more speed and power and they're applying the power too early to their hands. Or number two, they have an open club face and in terms of trying to be able to correct that open club face, it results in an early release. Chicken winging. 
This occurs in about 30%, give or take, of amateur golfers. It's not that prominent in professional golfers for a number of reasons, but predominantly because it decreases the amount of distance that you can generate. So chicken winging is when the lead arm breaks down and begins to bend through the impact of the golf swing. So there are ways to be able to correct that and be able to improve that, but at the end of the day, it can cause that medial epicondylitis that we talked about before. If we can find ways to be able to improve the swing, we may be able to be preventative, at least from a golf standpoint, on not having that pain occurring. However, that's not always possible, and sometimes the pain is there and it stays there, and then we have to start resulting in other potential treatment options. So those are going to be some of the things that we're going to talk about now. Some of the conservative treatment options are going to be things like you would automatically think to do. So that are things like using ibuprofen, naproxen, aspirin, heat, ice in order to be able to try to improve things. If you've been playing golf for a while, you may have seen people that have an elbow strap that's typically a little bit lower down on the arm. We're going to talk about that in a second. But some of the ways to be able to try and treat this naturally, as you'll see from various different physical therapists, are to do stretches. And one way is to be able to do a wrist extension with an elbow extension and to work that consistently to be able to improve the overall pain. And the second is to have a small dumbbell, maybe about a pound, pound and a half or so, and to do supination and pronation type drills in order to be able to affect some of that aspect of the muscle that's coming from the inner portion of the arm. The other advanced physical therapy treatments that can be done are gonna be things like dry needling where you take small acupuncture needles that are done by a physical therapist into the aspect of the skin to try to improve blood flow at that area, to be able to do blood flow restriction where you use some compressive uh, elastic elements, and then soft tissue manipulation in order to be able to provide myofascial release. In terms of bracing, there are two different types. There's a simple elbow brace that is typically one to three centimeters below the aspect of the elbow. And then there's a second type, which is a full elbow sleeve that can be able to provide support, particularly with the strap that tightens around the forearm. What are some of the treatment plans that exist? Well, one particular research paper really looked at how to be able to divide patients slash golfers into three different groups, kind of a, a minimal uh, invasive group, one that's a moderate and one that's an aggressive. So the minimal group is a group that doesn't really have that much problems, hasn't really had this as a sustainable issue, and doesn't have a job that really causes repetitive elbow uh, issues. So those are going to be individuals that can do a wait and see type approach. In essence, you just kind of watch it, you do some self uh, administered medication within reason where you look at naproxen, you look at aspirin, you look at ice and heat. One cautionary component of when you use an inset, you have to pay attention to what's going on with your kidneys, what's going on with your stomach, which are pretty two common things to make sure that you're not going to have an issue. And third is to make sure that you don't have a problem with your heart because if you have high blood pressure, it can predispose you to having some other problems and issues. But with those caveats notwithstanding, most of the time, you can try some of those things and be able to get some degree of improvement. The second column is someone that has some of those other comorbidities or other issues and elements that are in place, whether it's the job or whether you've had this episode before. Um, so that in that context, you need to be able to potentially seek counsel from a doc or from a physical therapist that may use some of those other things that we talked about before, like manual therapy or taping or bracing in order to be able to get some improvement. If those things don't get better, then getting a diagnostic image with the aspect of either MRI or ultrasound to be able to take a look at the tissues, which we're going to talk about in a second. And then that final group is the group that really has other problems that are going on. Things like neck pain, things like shoulder pain in addition to the elbow. And that should probably seek counsel a little bit sooner from a doctor or physical therapist in order to be able to get a better result. So let's say that you don't get improvement after trying some of the conservative therapies that you might have gotten either at home or through physical therapy. When you get the imaging done, what you're really looking to see, is there a muscle issue? Is there a tendon issue? And if so, what's going to be your next treatment option? When we talk about surgical treatment, 
typically we're trying all these modalities and other conservative options for about six to maybe as long as 12 months. But if that doesn't improve, now we're talking about possibly surgery. And surgery involves a number of different things with the aspect of muscle excision as well as attempting to free the ulnar nerve, which can be fairly invasive and need a, a good amount of recovery time. One of the things that can be done in order to be able to assess anatomy is to do an ultrasound exam that looks at the aspect of the muscles in the elbow as well as the tendons and looks to see is it normative in nature or are there some aberrancies or altered anatomy that's present. And then with that, there are things we can do in lieu of surgery that can get sustainable results but not need the degree of invasiveness. Ultrasonography of a golfer's elbow issue can show changes in the tendons, can show changes in the muscle where there are small partial tears or changes in the aspect of blood flow that's present. Um, so when we take a look at that, it allows for us to be able to find a specific target to be able to apply uh, medication or other elements that can allow for improvement of the elbow. One study did a meta-analysis, which is in essence a pooling of multiple research papers to look at this very issue. And what it assessed was platelet-rich plasma versus corticosteroids for elbow epicondylitis. So corticosteroids are pretty commonly known as things like cortisone, but your doctor is more likely using something like Kenalog or dexamethasone or depamedrol as a potential injectate to be able to get some improvement. And platelet-rich plasma, is the utilization of your blood and taking certain elements out of that blood, specifically platelets, to be able to get improved healing when it's re-injected into the area that in this context is the elbow to get different changes in, in the aspect of muscles and tendons. So this particular paper did a pooling of papers and what it found was that long-term follow-up after 24 weeks of treatment is that PRP injections had improved pain and function much more effectively than just corticosteroids. So something to consider as a potential option instead of surgery and if physical therapy isn't successful. One of the other things was found is that treatment of not just the aspect of the muscles, but also the ligaments can improve with the utilization of PRP. And one of the things that was looked at was for athletes that were playing and they did a PRP injection after the follow-up of 70 weeks that 30 out of 34 athletes had 88% improvement and it returned to the same level of play without any complaints. And the average time it took for them to get back to play was about 12 weeks with a range of anywhere from 10 to 15 weeks. Much sooner, quicker than surgery, more sustainable than steroids, and approaching surgical rates in terms of the length of time of relief. In conclusion, if you're really looking to be able to get back to doing the things that you want to do, there are certain things that you can do to prevent it by being able to look at your swing, evaluate it aggressively, and see how you can improve it. Two, to be able to do some exercises at home, like that aspect of doing the wrist extension and elbow extension, as well as that pronation, supination type drill, right? But then in addition to that, to seek physical therapy and see if you get some degree of relief. But prior to considering surgery, possibly thinking about platelet-rich plasma as a potential other alternative to be able to provide you sustainable relief and let you get back to being able to play and do the things that you want to be able to do. Thank you.